So Ernest Holmes says, developing confidence in ourselves and our ability to meet and handle all undesirable situations requires that we must have confidence in that something which is greater than we are. Then we will have spiritual self-reliance. When this is done, the lesser must always submit to the greater. Weakness will give way to strength, despair will turn to hope, hate will become love. Failure, failure will become success and sickness will dissolve into health. The action that takes place is not one of despotic or uh, overruling harshness, but one that moves in harmony, love, beauty, warmth, and order, quietly transforming all that is unlike it. So the talk title originally was Integrity, and I thought that sounded really boring and kind of schoolish. So I changed it to be yourself, the world will adjust. And I actually got that from my chiropractor's office. It's a sign that they have on their wall. And I love it because it's true. I think the most important gift anybody can give the world is to be their self, regardless of what that looks like to anybody else. I, I have shared before when I was in Hawaii, there was a man there that had t-shirts that said, be yourself, everybody else is taken, which is also true. My husband um, shares a story when he was living in Maryland and he'd go down um, and listen in the park to this guy that um, would sing and he would become John Denver, sang all John Denver songs, sounded like John Denver when he talked, didn't look like John Denver. And, and Paul thought, you know, John Denver is already doing John Denver really well. And yet we have a lot of tribute bands, so I guess it works both ways. But how do we, individually or collectively, truly be ourselves? So I'm going to use an anagram. And I decided, you know, Reverend Susie used to love these. And I kept thinking, why does she love those so much? And then I finally got it. Because if you're using letters, it reminds you what you want to talk about next. So I won't forget. So the anagram comes from Braving the Wilderness, which was written by uh, Brene Brown, and it's called Braving. So how do we be ourselves? So the first thing in being yourself is you need to learn to set boundaries. How many of you have trouble maybe setting boundaries? Yeah. It was always really hard for me, and sometimes we set boundaries and then we get so um, possessive about our boundaries, we kind of appear to be harsh sometimes without uh, being intentional about it. I am very clear that on Sundays I would really not like to have people ask me things like where's the paper for the copier or where's the light switch for the bathroom or you know whatever and I know all those things. So it makes sense they would ask me. However on Sunday my whole focus is getting up here. And that kind of pulls me from that focus. And yet what I realized last week is when I said to somebody, please don't ask me that, those questions, I'd hurt that person's feelings. And so I went back and apologized to her because my intent wasn't to hurt her feelings. And yet my intention, it, I want to be very clear that either those things have to wait, you know, it's just not that important on Sunday, or find somebody else because there are other people here that know those answers and so your boundaries are in support of how you can live your best life right and how you share those with people um, I'm learning more and more is to come from the heart and be compassionate a and maybe be you know maybe explain a little bit clearer instead of just like please don't talk to me on Sunday because that sounds a little rude doesn't it especially from a minister that's supposed to be building community. Don't talk to me on Sunday, though. And that's not my intent. You know, I want people to talk to me on Sunday. I just don't want to be the fix-it girl, you know, when the coffee's not percolating or whatever goes on here. And a lot of things go askew sometimes on Sunday. So um, with this person, what I did was I showed her the magic of how to get the um, printer to work. And there, there's a secret there, and we'll share it maybe, or maybe we won't, we'll just tell you it's magic. But set clear boundaries. 
realize that you deserve to say yes when you want to and the biggest yes you can give sometimes is a yes to yourself by saying no so have clear boundaries the R in braving is about um, I was going to say responsibility and that's not it hold on reliability that went right out of my brain reliability so, and reliability is if you're going to say you're going to do something do it and stop doing the um, blame and shame game with yourself and others how many of you would love to um, blame somebody for something that's not looking quite right in your life right now right it makes it easier doesn't it it makes it a lot easier to just um, go ahead and say eh, it's not me it's not me it's them and that's the a that's accountability right taking accountability for who you are and what you're doing and I have said before when life is going and and it's really good we're really good about taking responsibility for that aren't we like oh look what I did yay and then when a wheel falls off the car we certainly want somebody else to be responsible for that little mishap and that's when you get to sit down and have that conversation with yourself because if you really believe this philosophy and what we teach what we teach is energetically where we are always attracting things into our life and so sometimes even though it's uncomfortable is to look look back at yourself and say huh I wonder why I attracted that experience in my life and sometimes you can't do that in the middle of the experience right sometimes you really have to wait till you're on the other side of it to look back and go oh yeah how many of you have um, things in your life and you look back and realize oh that's a family story that's happened to me my mother did that my grandmother did that or my father did that my grandfather did that you have those stories that's how powerful we are right we recreate familiar in our life whether it's supporting us or not until we decide I'm not gonna live that way any longer you know I had that experience um, as somebody who who was gifted the disease of um, the addiction of alcohol and drugs that was a genetic disease with me and what happened was when I went to a therapist and she said so tell me about your drinking and I said well the first time I drank I drank myself into a blackout and she went oh no no you didn't this is a progressive disease Gail certainly you did not drink yourself into a blackout and I said oh yes and I did and she goes well then this is passed down genetically through your generations you came through you know there was no way that you, the first time that you took that drink that that wasn't going to happen to you now I could blame and shame I could blame my family for that I could shame myself for that and the accountability comes from there's the reality of my life there's the gift I was given now what are you going to do with it right because everything in your life everything in your life is a gift no matter what it looks like on the human realm where we whether we call it gold or not gold <laughs> whatever we call it it's a gift and so how do we incorporate that how do we use it you know I I didn't want to be a person that couldn't have fun at a party you know and now I've learned I can have fun at a party it just looks different and so just to remember whatever's going on in your life to look at as an opportunity and a gift and to think how can I m use this to my advantage how can I use this for me so the V in, uh, in braving is vault and vault means 
If it's not my story, I don't share it. The worst thing that can happen, and we all do it, I think, maybe not, maybe not all, maybe not everybody, I know I'm guilty of it. The quickest way to make a connection with somebody is usually to talk about somebody else, is it not? And that could be, um, it could be gathering around what we used to call in corporate America the water cooler and kibitzing about our boss. It could be kibitzing about um, the political situation, whether we're for or against it. It could be talking about um, Gail and how she wore that pink dress to work. What was she thinking? could be almost anything that we tend to, that's how we tend to make that quick connection with somebody that we really don't know on a personal level, is we bring up and talk about something else. And so really to understand, if you're not part of the story, it's probably not yours to share. And somebody asked me once, well, what if I'm going to, because Randy's sitting right here, I'm going to use Randy as an example. And let's say somebody comes up to me and says, so how, how's Randy and Tamara and, and Vinny doing? And I could share with them things Randy has told me about raising Vinny or, or any of that. And instead, a really wonderful response is he's doing really well. And you know what? You should probably call and talk to him. I bet he'd love to hear from you. Right? There is a way to connect and to set that boundary with and doing it from your heart. But to really remember, if you're not part of the story, talk about something you're part of. We've all got great stories, don't we? Yes? No? Yeah? I, I think. Mary Ellen's got some good ones. Talk to her after service. She's had an amazing th week this past week. So the I in braving is integrity. Who are you when nobody else is around? When nobody is watching you, are you kind? When you think nobody's watching you, do you keep your garbage in the car or do you throw it out the window? I know, right? People do that. I know. I'm not. I know. Well, it's true. Have you ever, you know, Paul gets, it drives my husband crazy. I will just share this. It drives, and he will, he, it's okay that I'm sharing his story. It drives him crazy that people throw stuff on the ground, cigarettes or whatever. And, and, um, and so it's true. Some people leave garbage, walk around our property after service, and you'll see garbage. And so we can all say, oh, I would never do that. And maybe that's true for everybody sitting here, except some people that might not be in integrity would say, oh, I would never do that. And then one day they get lazy and they leave garbage somewhere. They're hiking. There's no garbage can around. They don't want to hike it out. Those kind of things. That's what I meant. So who are you? What are your values? That's basically the theme of this entire year. Uh, for um, Centers for Spiritual Living is living our values. And this month, the value is integrity. So who are you? How do you show up? And do you live that regardless if you're sitting at home by yourself or you're around a group of people where you, where you believe that's the way you're supposed to be? Because if it's truly a value, if you're truly in integrity, that's who you are all the time. I aspire to be kind all the time, even when I'm by myself. Now, I say aspire because there are times in my life I'm not kind. It does not mean that kindness, that when I'm not kind, I'm out of integrity. I know when I'm not being kind. And it hits me in my heart, and then I think I, I must go and apologize to that person or have a little meltdown, whatever. But that doesn't make me out of integrity. That brings me back to that honesty thing about being honest with myself and really understanding that I'm not perfect. I just strive to do my best. And that's all that we're asked to do, is to always strive to do our best. 
And so being in integrity is about what are your core values? And are you living those? Are you being true to yourself all the time? And the world will adjust. Because if we believe this philosophy, if I'm living my life to the fullest, if I am being absolutely standing in honesty all the time with who I am and how I want to be in the world, then the world will adjust for me because I, w I attract people to me that are attracted to those things that I emanate out, right? And so I can look around and think, this is a group of very honest people. This is a group of people that loves to be in community. This is a group of people that are seekers. Why do I know that? Because those are things that have how I live my life and you're here. Right? And so how do you be in integrity? You be in integrity just by being who you are. And to spin off of that, the N in braving is being non-judgmental. How many of you, I can't raise my hand very high with that, are not judgmental? I think, yeah, see, all of us have something, right? Every single one of us has something. And so the thing to do when you realize you are judging another person is to just tell yourself, they're doing the best they can. They're really doing the best they can. How many of you judge your parents? Right? And yet, every... <laughs> Did she raise her hand? Good for you. Bravo, young lady. Bravo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. She's being real. Absolutely. And yet... If we look at our parents, or ourselves as parents, with compassion, right? With compassion. Our parents have their stories, don't they? That we either know or we don't know. And most of the stories, especially if we had parents that might have been uh, cruel or unjust, we probably don't know their stories because they would never share them. And I'm not saying in any situation, be it your parent, be it an ex, be it somebody you used to be best friends with and the relationship is over, I'm not saying you have to have a relationship with that person. I am saying to be non-judgmental is to work forgiveness. To be able to say, there too is the presence of God. I will forgive them for how they treated me. And yet, there too is the presence of God. Now, I don't know about you. I've had an opportunity to do this. I have shared with you before. I was in a very abusive relationship. Um, more than one, actually. And what I got was, it wasn't about that person. I didn't need to forgive to make him feel better. I needed to forgive him so I could quit hanging on to the relationship. Now, just because I forgave him does not mean that I want to be his neighbor. Just because I forgave him does not mean I want to be his Facebook friend. He doesn't even know I forgave him. How I know I forgave him is because I don't, if his name is mentioned or a thought comes up about something in our relationship, I don't immediately go to anger and attack, right? That's when I knew I had really forgiven him, that I could think of, of a past and think, that, was a that is a story, that really happened, so what? I'm not going to let that story define who I am today. That's why you forgive. Reverend Susie put it to me best when she said, Gail, if you don't forgive him, you might as well have stayed married to him because he's taken up the same amount of space energetically. So how about you? Who do you have in your life that probably has hurt you deeply that you're not forgiving? 
And if you're not forgiving them, remember, it's not about them. You don't even have to tell them that you've forgiven them. It's energetically letting them go so that you can live the best life you're, you're here to live. Make sense? And it's, and it's good work. It really is. And it's, and it's deep work, and it takes a lot of faith, and probably a couple sessions, maybe more, with a practitioner or a minister. Because a lot of stuff's going to come up. And you're going to get back into this blame and shame. And all of it is a way for us to really be ourselves. Who am I without the story of that marriage and hanging on to it? Who am I? How did that, how did that relationship, better yet, how did that relationship help me become the person I am today? What was the gift in that relationship? And I used to tell people the gift in that relationship was he was a really good cook. I put him through chef school. I ate really well for nine years. And somebody said, is that it? And I said, it's the best I've got. And to this day, it's still the best I've got. I go back and I look for more gold nuggets. I think the other, oh, the other gold nugget right here, right now, it just came to me was I had the courage to set the boundary and say, scared to death at the very core of who I was, get out of my house now. That took courage. That took bold. And so I, I got that also. I started to find out I don't have to be a victim. So there's another gift. So I'll, I'll have to thank him later for that. In the ethers, I don't talk to him. And the last gift of braving, or the last gift of being yourself, is to live in that place of gratitude and generosity. Every day, and I know that some of you do this, some of you don't do it. I have a I have a spiritual practice that when I do it, I'm really, really good at it, and then sometimes I don't do it at all. And then I'm really, really good at it, and sometimes I don't do it at all. So this year, I'm doing a year-long program of the artist way. And if you've ever done the artist way, you wake up a half hour earlier than you were waking up so you can write three pages of stream of consciousness morning pages. And some of that now I've built into what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? What things in my life bring me great joy? Who am I thankful that, for the people that are in my life? And that can change depending on who I've spent time with really, recently. So who am I grateful for? And one of the things I'm grateful for now is I have this wonderful sauna that I got. And I've got a... Um, I've got issues in my right arm. And I realized when I sit in this dry sauna that my heart, arm hurts less. And so my husband came up with this brilliant idea. He said, why don't you get up in the morning and write your morning pages in the sauna? I was like, score dang. What a great idea. So I was grateful for him for that idea, right? There are m many things you can be grateful for. You know, you can be grateful because the grocery store was open this morning and you got to go in and buy your morning coffee or Starbucks. You can be grateful for people that show up out of the blue that you haven't seen in a long time and there they are sitting in your life today. And you can be grateful for that. There are lots of things to be grateful for. And we sometimes get so busy that we forget. We forget to really celebrate our life. And that's what gratitude is. Celebrating your life every single day. We always think, of, well, I celebrate 4th of July and I celebrate my birthday and I celebrate Christmas and there's Easter. What about those little things that happen in your life every single day? Every one of you has something that probably happened within the last 24 hours that you're thinking, wasn't that big of a deal? 
And yet it probably was something you could be grateful for. And so being grateful, finding a place within you that says, ah, yes. So to be yourself, you want to brave the wilderness. So we took the word braving to give us ideas on how do we be ourself. We set boundaries. And we make sure they're clear. Don't set boundaries and don't tell people what they are. And then get mad when they don't follow them. That's not fair. And that's setting people up. And I've done that before, just so you know. That's why I know that doesn't work. Like, why didn't that person know? Be reliable. Be somebody that your friends, your family, the people you work with, this community, be somebody that other people can count on. That when you say you're going to do something, you do it. When you say you're not going to do something, you don't do it. Right? Just be clear. It ties in really well with boundaries. Be accountable. Be accountable and take responsibility for who you are. If you're going to be yourself, quit blaming other people for who you are. Be yourself. Show up as yourself. And if somebody doesn't like it, so what? If they don't like it, they probably didn't like you in the first place. Just be yourself. The universe is going to fill that hole if somebody walks out of your life, I promise you. And the person that comes in is going to treat you better than the person that walked out. Because they're going to really see who you are and like who you are. B. Vault. Don't gossip. I know it's hard. It's hard for me. I don't know about you guys. It's hard for me. I'm just going to own that. I have to practice all the time. Like, shouldn't probably share that story, not mine to share. And sometimes I'm not good and I share it anyway. And so just own the fact that it's a place that is easy to go to. Find something better to talk about. If you're going to tell a story about somebody else, then maybe instead of telling that story, look at the person you were going to share the story with and say, hey, what's new in your life? Because here's the thing. When people start to realize that you don't gossip, you're going to ha have a great faith. They're going to have great faith and trust in you, and you're going to become one of their confidants because they know when I tell that person this, it is in a vault, and it's sealed, and it's locked. So don't gossip. Live from integrity. It gets back to being yourself. Live your values. Whether anybody's watching or not, live your values. Because here's the deal. Your higher self and you are always watching. And so when you're in alignment, you're in alignment with what your values are. They might not be my values. They're your values. And as long as they're your values, then you have nothing to apologize for. Do your best not to judge other people. Remember, every single person on this planet is doing the best they have with what they were given. And the best thing we can do, we don't necessarily have to hang out with people that we don't feel good around. However, it doesn't stop us when we're doing our prayer work or when we're meditating or whenever they pop into their, our mind. I send you love and blessings. I know the highest and best for you. That doesn't hurt. And energetically, if we believe we're all connected, energetically they're going to get that message. And who knows when they receive it if that little bit of light isn't going to change their life and maybe put them back on the path that they wanted to walk in the first place. And then be generous and filled with gratitude. This is a life that each one of us has been given. I don't know the s statistics, but it's huge. It is huge that every single one of us got birthed based on the number of times births don't happen. So be grateful that you're here. And then just remember, you know, I was reminded not only 
is it a miracle that two people came together and created us and then it's a miracle thinking of the history of the world our what our ancestors went through so that those two people could meet so we were here be grateful for that every day every day I get to take another breath thank you God so let's pray so it is in that thank you in that knowing in that realm of infinite possibilities that we stand stand in that field and say that we are willing to brave the wilderness we are willing and able to know the truth of who we are and to accept it and live it graciously and boldly each and every one of us here each and every person everywhere there is a divine idea that is bursting forth within us that says be yourself be who you have come here to be be that which was given to you the minute you punch that ticket and said I'm going to planet earth be that boldly make no excuses for who you are the world needs you each and every one of us a divine idea a spark and so I just bless each person here I bless all people everywhere knowing that every single person regardless of whether I judge what they're doing or not as good or bad or whatever is doing the best that they know how and from their view it's good and so my what I choose to do is to bless all send everyone especially those I may be in disagreement with just for a moment put your hands on your heart and send somebody that you know totally is in disagreement with you about maybe everything and just for a moment picture beyond the human realm of who they are and see them as that divine idea and then just send them love and so as we send out this very dust of love to all these different individuals I just say thank you God thank you for the awesomeness of this day of this community of this group of people that is willing to love unconditionally so I turn all of these words over into the law knowing that as it is spoken it is done the universe has said yes and in that I am grateful as we let go and let God and together we say and so it is amen <laughs>